U.S. General outlines priority targets for ATA CMS missiles, F-16 fighters, Russian headquarters, artillery and logistics on the front line, and in Crimea, will be priority targets for ATA CMS missiles. Ukrainian general staff will find better targets for F-16s. General Ben Hodges, former commander of the U.S. Army in Europe, gave details in an interview with RBC Ukraine. He noted that the country can use ATA CMS at its discretion. According to him, there are no restrictions on strikes. Hodges noted that the Ukrainian general staff will make the best choice on where the missiles will be used, as they will not be countless. In his opinion, it is necessary to prioritize the relevant targets for destroying them, and these could be Russian headquarters, logistics and artillery. I think these will be the priority targets, he said. The general said a long-range precision strike is what would make Crimea unfit for Russian forces. Their air force and navy would no longer be able to operate because almost the entire territory of Crimea is within range of those weapons. Hodges is not convinced that using ATA CMS against the Crimean bridge is the best use of such weapons. He called for using these ATA CMS to best effect to destroy logistics headquarters artillery and air bases. There would have to be so many of them, and I think the Ukrainian general staff and General Budanov have other plans for the Kirsch Bridge, he said. Ukrainian Air Force spokesperson Ilya Yevlash said that Ukrainians need to be patient with the delivery of F-16 fighter jets. The transfer of the planes will be officially announced after they are delivered to Ukraine. Yevlash comments on the previous statement that F-16s would appear in Ukraine after Ukrainian Easter on May the 5th. We are all waiting for F-16s to appear in Ukrainian airspace as soon as possible. However, we cannot disclose the exact date when they will appear. Yes, there is already some information in the public domain that they are supposed to appear in June. However, we are waiting for the official announcement when they will arrive and only then will we be able to inform within the limits of what is available that these aircraft are already in service with the Ukrainian Air Force, he says. Confiscated Russian assets will allow Ukraine to finance war until 2028. Ukraine has received a vital military assistance of $61 billion from the United States. However, Kyiv still needs a medium-term financing plan to withstand pressure from Russia, according to Reuters. The central element of the financing plan should be the mobilization of frozen assets of the Moscow Central Bank to compensate for the war damages. Reuters suggests that the American aid package will provide Ukraine with weapons and ammunition until approximately the end of 2025. Therefore, during this period, Ukraine may once again run out of arms. Even if Joe Biden is re-elected as US president this November, he may struggle to get more money out of Congress. And if Donald Trump returns to the White House, American support for Ukraine will be even more precarious, given the Republican candidate's previous lack of commitment to Kyiv's defense, the article states. A multi-year financing plan for Ukraine would have several advantages. First and foremost, it would provide some insurance against political fluctuations in the United States. It would also bolster the morale of Ukrainians and give Western arms manufacturers more confidence in expanding production. The main way to get much more money for Ukraine is to mobilize Russian assets frozen by Western countries at the beginning of the war, amounting to approximately $320 billion. If the countries guaranteed interest from the assets for a decade, they might raise 30 to 40 billion euros. While this will help, it will not be a game changer because it will fund Ukraine for less than half a year, the report says. It is emphasized that if Ukraine receives $320 billion, it will be a completely different matter. That would finance the war until at least the end of 2028. If the belligerents ended or froze the conflict before then, Ukraine could use some of the money to rebuild its economy, which the World Bank estimates will cost $486 billion, the material says. Since the start of the full-scale war in Ukraine, Western countries have frozen over $300 billion of Russian assets. So far, they have not been able to confiscate them due to legal and reputational risks. In this regard, the United States and G7 countries are considering several options. Transferring the proceeds from Russian assets to Ukraine to buy weapons, transferring Russian assets to Ukraine as compensation for Russia's invasion, using frozen Russian assets as collateral for loans to Ukraine. Vice President of the European Commission, Valdis Dombrovskis, stated that 
$300 billion in frozen Russian assets could be used as collateral for lending to Ukraine. Earlier, Reuters reported that the group of seven countries are considering discussing the idea proposed by the United States to confiscate proceeds from Russian assets at the summit scheduled for June.